Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to be removing this engine and prepping it for disassembly and inspection. I begin by removing the starter generator and the mounting plate that's just below it. I do this so I can use the two holes for mounting the engine to the engine stand after I remove it from the tractor. In order to get the engine off of the tractor, I need to remove this main drive belt. In order to do that, you have to take the entire uh, PTO clutch assembly off to get that drive belt off. We can't forget to take all of the choke and throttle linkages off the engine too before attempting to remove it. Here I am removing the mounting bolts that hold the engine to the tractor's frame. Uh, all Kohler K-Series engines are held onto the tractor with four bolts. This uh, oil pan here is a wide base oil pan, so you see it kind of has like little uh, mounting flanges uh, off to the side. So those are just 3 8 inch uh, nuts and bolts, so you just remove them, and then this engine will come right off. Here I am prepping to remove the engine by taking two of the cylinder head bolts out and replacing them with eye hooks. Now it's important if you decide to lift an engine out of the tractor this way, you want to thread those eye hooks in all the way so as many threads engage the cylinder block as possible. Now this engine only weighs about 60-70 pounds as it sits now, which is perfectly fine to lift by hand. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I need to ultimately mount this to an engine stand and it is near impossible to hold up an engine, mount it to a stand, and use the tools necessary all at the same time. So now I've hooked a small chain hoist to a stud in the ceiling of my garage. I'm gonna use this hook it to the chains here that's attached to the top of the engine and I'm going to use this chain hoist to lift this engine off of the tractor and mount it onto an engine stand. Now comes the most time consuming part of any engine or tractor restoration and that is cleaning it up. Uh, here I am just preparing before I take off all the external components, I'm just cleaning this off with some degreaser, paper towels, compressed air, and a little plastic scraper to get most of the gunk off. I'll be doing a more thorough cleaning of each individual part as I prep them individually for paint. Now, on this side of the engine, I'm going to be taking everything you see off, uh, starting with that, that governor, that throttle linkage, the carburetor, the air filter, the fuel pump, camshaft cover, points cover, points, flywheel housing, grass screen, and the flywheel, as well as that exhaust uh, elbow and exhaust muffler right there. All of it's coming off, and here we go into fast motion so you can see it all happen. Here's a tip for those of you who've never disassembled an engine before. Before you do it, take a nice uh, smartphone or a camera and go around 360 degrees of the engine and take a bunch of photos. That way you remember how everything goes back on after you've finished repairing, painting, and uh, restoring each individual part.
You can also download a free service manual of this Kohler K301 engine at KohlerEngines.com. Kohler is gracious enough to offer all of their service manuals for free to download on their website. Uh, their service manual has lots of illustrations and diagrams of uh, the individual parts. So if you forget how something goes, you can also see that manual for information. I always like to put the bolts back onto the parts as often as I can, like I'm doing here, just to help keep my parts organized and take up less space in my storage area. Here I am now prepping to remove the flywheel off the engine. Uh, first, I'm cleaning up the threads right here with a tap. That way, when I use my flywheel puller, my uh, bolts that I use to attach the flywheel, I can get them nice and smoothly, and I can drive them as far into the threads as possible to give it as much pulling power as it can. Here I am now threading in the bolts to the flywheel. It's important that you want to use as strong as a bolt as you can. I believe these are grade 8 bolts to give it as much uh, rigidity as possible. Now I'm uh, just getting the the puller into place, making sure everything is even, straight. Make sure it's uh, because when you when you work that center bolt there, that center stud, you want it to pull in a straight outward direction. Uh, so that's why it's important to make sure that flywheel uh, puller is perfectly parallel to the flywheel itself. Here I am. I'm using an impact wrench, and I'm just going to turn it in tight. And as you'll see, uh, the impact motion as well as tightening in that center stud will just pop that flywheel right off of the shaft. Now this exhaust bolt that I'm working on here was extremely rounded off and just really rusted on there. So instead of fighting it, I decided to just take this electric die grinder and just cut it off. It's important to keep your project organized as you go through the restoration process. I put all of my parts, both working on and finished, on this big five shelf rack here. That way everything is out of the way and easily found when I need it. For high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage small engines like the Kohler K301 that's in the tractor I'm working on in this video, please visit my website isavetractors.com. We carry over 150 new parts and products for your vintage small engines like your Kohler K-Series, Briggs & Stratton, Tecumseh, Wisconsin, and soon-to-be Onan engines. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.